What's going on? I just finished control. What a wild ride. But now we have to go back in the courtroom. You know what I mean? If we're about to finish this up, like, before the year is up, this is unfortunately going to be a three trial or a three day episode. Ugh, that's upsetting. Big sweat from Max. Good morning, Max. Max? M milk. <laughs> what? If I don't have a glass of milk before I go on stage, I, I, I just can't function, sweetie. S stage? Don't- I'm gonna close my door. This is kind of awkward doing this. Don't worry. There won't be a stage. All you have to do is sit down. I guess. Nick? Max is really nervous. That's understandable. Hey, my sweeties. What? Uh, you don't think I should f you don't think I should fly, do you? Huh? You know, you you've got to make a good first impression. When I enter the room, maybe I should fly in and warm up the crowd a little. No, 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 no. We can't be having you flying around the courtroom. It just wouldn't be right. Imagine if you hit someone. Don't worry, Max. Just do what Nick says and everything will be okay. Oh, sweetie. What is it this time, Max? Why don't you try flying into the courtroom? I can see it now, the dashing young lawyer flying fabulously in from above. One glimpse of that and everyone in the room will be on your side. Max? Really? No one needs to fly today. D Nick? What's with that look in your eyes? I like the sound of that. Dashing young lawyer flying fabulously. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> 10 a.m. As usual. Francisca. Hi. And now, the case of one... What? Your honor, get on with it. What was the- what was that? Oh, sorry. I just realized that the defendant's name is Billy Bob Jones. So? Well, isn't the defendant also known as Maximilian Galactica? Yes, your honor. He does often go by that name. You know, my grandchild is a huge fan of his. I think everyone here wouldn't mind if we called the defendant Maximilian Galactica. It sounds more friendly. Hmm, wonder if that is to our advantage. Miss Von Karma, your opening statement if you please. I hope you didn't bother thinking you'd win this one, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Eh? That spirit channeling trial was a sham. I refuse to acknowledge its legitimacy. It did not count. Do you hear me? She must still be upset about what happened last time. <laughs> Excuse me, wow. You have no chance. Zero zilch nada. I'm not losing this case. Why, you ask? Because it is not in the nature of a Von Karma to lose anything. At anything. I guess being born with the name Von Karma is a free pass to be arrogant and annoying. Watch and learn, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I'll show you the textbook procedure for proving how absolutely guilty you are. M me Guilty? What are you talking about? It will be my ultimate revenge. But it's not like it'll bring her dad back. <laughs> Wait, you keep roasting her with that. Relax, my relax. There, opening statement complete. Now, let's hurry and wrap up this waste of time. Very well. You may call your first witness, Miss Von Karma. Detective Dick Gumshoe, get up there, now!
Hey, pal. Sorry to keep you from work, as I'm sure you need every penny you can earn, Detective. <laughs> Don't mention it. It's not any trouble at all. I've been looking forward to this. Very well. I would like to- I would like you to begin by shedding light on the events in question. At your service, sir. Alright, detective. You may proceed with your testimony. These voices are so fun. Details of the events. The night of the crime. Snow was falling until 9.40pm, making it extremely cold out. I hate maps. All of the circus performers were gathered in the big top to practice their routines. Okay. The practice session broke up around 10 p.m. The murder itself took place in the plaza in front of the lodging house at 10 to 15 p.m. Okay. The victim was bent over a wooden box, dead as a door doornail. Doornail. The cause of death was a blunt force trauma that snapped a vertebrae in his neck. Okay. I see, he was beaten to death. Here's the autopsy report for the victim. The court accepts this into evidence. Time of death, 1015. Okay, that is literally what I just wrote down. But that's okay. <clears throat> A blunt object, hmm? Very well. Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. <clears throat> the night of the crime. Okay, yeah, so, uh, falling until 9.40, making it extremely cold out. Hold it! Let me ask you about the snow. It was nearly a blizzard up until the time of the crime. Did it pile up? It wasn't such a big deal. Maybe about an inch and a half was on the ground. The snow froze in place and stayed on the ground until the next day. Hmm. The snow. Let me see. There's got to be more to this. Eh? What's the matter? Nick? I need to take a look at the court record. Stop, bro. Like... Oh, yeah, there's snow. What? Am I missing something here? Mr. Gumshoe, what were the members of the circus doing on the night of the crime? All the circus performers were gathered in a big top. When you say all of the circus performers, who do you mean? Everyone but the dancers and the staff were there. Regina the animal tamer, Mo the clown, Ben the ventriloquist, and of course, the defendant, Maximilian Galactica, and his victim, the ringmaster. Oh, I almost forgot. R Regent the tiger was there as well. Regent the tiger. Out of curiosity, what about the circus monkey? When I was investigating yesterday, he happened to snatch my wristwatch. Detective, you are welcome to file a police report after these proceedings. Sometimes it's hard to do the judge's voice. I can't get my voice that low sometimes. Practice session broke around 10. After the practice was over, where did everyone head off to? Regina was playing with Regent, while Moe went back to his room tired from work. Ben the Ventriloquist went to the front gate, absorbed in his own world. The Ringmaster and Max went off to the Ringmaster's room to talk privately. Talk privately, huh? That's awfully suspicious. You wouldn't happen to know what they were talking about, would you? It seems they were negotiating Max's salary. Actually, Max was asking for Regina's hand in marriage. That's right, that's right. 
All this stuff took place in the plaza in front of the lodging house at 10.15. I'd like you to be a little... I don't know what it is about doing these voices, but I get so tired. I'd like you to be a bit more specific about the events at 10.15 p.m. Huh? Uh, um, okay. Not a problem, pal. We've got a witness that told us the whole thing. Ah! This is totally meaningless. Time to move on. Hmm. All right. We'll just have to revisit that testimony later. Detective Gumshoe, would you mind telling us how the victim met his end? The victim was found bent over a wooden box, dead as a door. A wooden box? That's right. The victim must have been carrying the wooden box when he was killed. He was not. Look, bro, he has fingerprints, bro. Or footprints. Oh, I guess that means he could have been carrying it. Got him, stupid. Carrying the box, huh? It was a rather strange wooden box, your honor. What do you mean? Well, it was much heavier than it looked. Not to mention it was locked. Locked, you say? The victim was hunched over this 20 pound... 20 pounds is not heavy, bro. It boasts a small but strong lock. The victim was hunched over this 20 pound box. 20 pound box. It boasts a small but strong lock. This may be my only chance, so I might as well ask some questions. Do you mind telling us what was inside that box? Well, when we found the box, it was locked tighter than Fort Knox. So we took it back to the station and cracked it open. All that was inside was this little bottle. Oh. Bottle? What is that, detective? Exactly what it looks like, your honor. It's a condiment bottle. What's inside the bottle? It's filled with... Pepper. Even though that shit's white. Like... Pepper? Why in the world was it locked in that big box? There was only one little bo- There was only one little bottle in that huge box. It was 20 pounds? Bullshit. I wonder if that is some sort of special meaning. Small seasoning bottle. You know what? <laughs> that could have been, uh, brought from the cafeteria. Because, uh, there was that fight. Or that argument between Ben or, uh, Trillo and Max. Could have came from there. Cause of death was blunt force trauma that snapped a vertebrae in his neck. According to the autopsy report, the murder weapon was a blunt object, correct? You've done your homework, pal. Pal. And you, and you haven't found this murder weapon, have you? The police are searching for it as we speak. My theory is that it is something the perpetrator ran off with. You would think so, especially since you didn't find it on the seat. No, 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 no. I, I bet he made it disappear with magic. <laughs> well, I think we have a good feel for the details of the event now. I guess that's all we're gonna get out of Gumshoe in this case. You mean all we're gonna get out of him in that is that little bottle of pepper? Now that we have wrapped up with the detective, I'd like to call my next witness. <laughs> I'm not even off the stand yet. Obviously, but that's due to you being slow and unable to take a hint. I don't know, but wrapped up has such a mean sound to it. I'm a sensitive guy, pal. Thank you very much, Detective Gumshoe. You may step down. Miss Von Karma, call your next witness. I would like to call Mr. Benjamin Woodman to the stand. She must be talking about Ben the Ventriloquist. I wonder if Trillo will show up on the stand as well. You already know he will. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, uh. Please state your name and occupation for the record. 
My full name is Triloquist. I'm employed as an operatic tenor. E excuse me. The witness called to the stand was Mr. Benjamin Woodman, ventriloquist. That robe must be cutting off your circulation. I said I was a singer. Maybe you don't believe me. Fine, I'll grace you with a song. Eh. Me, 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 me. <coughs> the world of law, exciting and dig, yeah, you know. Decided by a judge dressed up like a woman. Well, what do you think? It had good rhythm. It's just the lyrics. They leave something to be desired, so to speak. T Trillo, you know better than to insult a judge. Shut up. Just look at your nose. You would think you'd have a sense to fix it. It's so ugly, I want to punch you in the face on and off switch. So what? I want to punch you in the face on the off chance swelling would help. God, that, that was like a mean tongue, tw tongue twister. You know that your nose is the reason you'll never be an A-list star. You don't even have a nose, Trillo. Celebrities must really enjoy saying everything that flashes into their minds. What is going on here? Order, order, I demand to know who the witness is. Don't, don't worry about me, sir. I'll let Trillo handle this. I'm not worried about you one bit. I'm wor- Ouch! You won't get anywhere trying to figure out this witness. Now let's proceed. <laughs> Once practice was over, I left the tent with the stooge, uh, I mean clown. Once we got to the lodging house, I ditched him and went back to the plaza's entrance. <laughs> That's when I saw Max heading towards the scene of the crime. He was the only one heading that way. How could that punk not be the killer? You guys were too. Then the police showed up and took Magic Boy away. You saw Maximilian Galactica heading towards the scene? You're sure of that? Without a doubt, he had on his silk hat, cloak, and that dumb white roses on his chest. How can you mistake someone with that crazy get up and his nose stuck up so high? Th that's enough. I think we all get the picture. Just one thing. You said you ditched the clown. That's right. Dress boy. Well, since you weren't with him, couldn't that mean the clown committed the crime? Oh, he's talking about Mo. I thought he was talking about Ben, like calling him a clown. Oh, that is the face of a killer. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm getting way ahead of myself, but this is that heat music, so it means something. What a shame. It was a nice theory, but the clown can't be the culprit. Why is that? Here's absolute proof. A uh, silk hat. This was found at the scene of the crime. It belongs to the defendant. Ah. Ah. Without question, he was wearing the signature hat during practice. If the clown was the murderer, there would be no reason for this hat to be at the scene. Unless he was framing him? Come on. Hmm. Well done, Miss Von Karma. Your pro pros prosecutorial skills are unrivaled. What? Well done. Ugh. Thank you for stating the obvious. Thank you for stating the obvious, Mr. Phoenix Wright. What do you have to say? Oh, Mr. Phoenix Wright, what do you have to say? Oh, okay. I guess she's the boss again today. She always is. What are you talking about? She brings that energy. That I'm in charge energy. Once practice is over, I left the tent with the stooge. I mean, clown. Yes, yeah, he's stooge. I thought he was talking about Ben. The clown? You're talking about Mo. Of course I'm talking about that old fart. He's so pathetic, I can't stand him. Just a little bit of exercise and his makeup is running all over the place. Once practice was over, he was no tenths of the way to nearly keeling over for good. Poor guy. 
we didn't have any choice, so Ben took him back to his room. When it comes to being a first place loser, that goal is ahead of the back. Hmm. Then what happened? Okay. So we got to the lodging house. I ditched him and went back to the plaza's entrance. Okay. Why the plaza's entrance? To do some thinking, of course. It was awfully cold out that night, especially with all the snow around. Wouldn't thinking in your nice, warm lodging house have been a better idea? Can you relax? Mr. Phoenix Wright, I think you should leave the thinking to the witness. But I'm a good thunker. <laughs> At least my teachers always said that I was. Is that a typo? Thunker? Come on, Capcom, step it up. That's when I saw Max heading towards the scene of the crime. So he's talking about... The lodging house. Mo and Acro. So he's talking about the plaza entrance. Which is the bottom left of that thing? And then the lodging house? Maybe? I don't know. That's when I saw Max heading towards the scene of the crime. Bank. Are you sure it was really Max Galactica? Of course I am. How could you mistake someone wearing such a snobby three-piece getup? Snobby three-piece getup? Get the wax out of your ears. Lawyers nowadays, you're all like talking to a brick wall. Axis three-piece get up. Jeez, can you could you be any more dense? All to excuse me, all together now. Silk uh, excuse me, silk hat, cloak, white roses. Silk hat, cloak, white roses. Thank you. Nick? I think you should put a little bit more effort into your preparing your questions. Help me! He was the only one heading that way. How could a punk have not have been the killer? I don't know. Who tell me? You saw Max and only Max, right, Trillo? That's right. That makes him the killer. Okay, then where was... Then... Where was Russell? There was only one person headed that way that night. Hmm, that makes quite a bit of sense, and makes Max one suspicious character. There's more to the story than meets the eye. Is there something amiss in this? Ben only saw Max? Right, like he, he would have to see Russell too. First let me say. There's no proof it was Max. Ben only saw Max. That's a bit strange, don't you think? Well, it's strange. That you only saw Max. Doesn't it seem like you should have seen someone else as well? What? Where are you going with this, Mr. Wright? Who else do you suppose the witness should have seen? Bro. Take that. That's the victim. That's correct. If Trillo was at the entrance to the plaza, he should have seen the ringmaster as well. Yeah, I'm right, okay. My my morale is high. Ah! Obviously the ringmaster arrived at the scene of the crime before the witness could have seen him. Anyone with sense could have figured that one out. What are you talking about? The ringmaster and Max went together to the ringmaster's room. Is that, according to the defendant, a likely story? If Maximilian Galactica was supposed to be in the Ringmaster's room, why was he just as the witness stated at the scene of the crime? F I see. It seems that at this stage I have no reason to doubt this witness's testimony. And there are clearly no conclusive contradictions. He's right. A brilliant judgment, Your Honor. Now, let's move along with the testimony. God damn it. Hmm. Trillo wouldn't have had- Wait, Trillo wouldn't happen to have an ulterior motive for incriminating Max, would he? Yes. The whole Regina thing. But how the hell do I prove that? Shit. Well, Max is part of that bitter love triangle with Regina. Which is probably why Max conked him over the head. 
right in the restaurant. Um, or in the cafeteria. Um, Nick, wasn't Ben the one who got knocked over the head? Uh, yeah, I think so. I, I, I don't know anymore. This practice is over. I left the tent with the stooge. I mean, clown. Oh, shit. That was it? Oh, press this last one, I guess. Around what time did the police arrive at the scene? Hmm. I was supposed to, wait. I suppose that would have been around... Hey, what time was it? Huh? Um, I, I think it was around... I'd say a bit after 10.30 p.m., I think. Practice ended around 10, so you hung around the lodging house the entire time? I... I I, I I guess that sounds about right. Wasn't it awfully cold? I can't believe you just stand out in the weather, like, stand outside in that weather. Well, uh, the truth is... Will you shut up, you big-nosed dope? Why are you telling him anything extra? Why can't you believe that we just stand outside in that weather? Well, maybe you were waiting for someone. What? Who said we were waiting for someone? Yeah, see, he's getting riled up. I'm right. Mr. Phoenix Wright, we can all do without your offhanded theories. Ugh. But this witness, he's cracking under the pressure already. I'm onto something. Hmm. Mr. Wright. Who else... Wait, who do you suppose the witness is waiting for out in the cold that night? I can't save shit. Max, bro? Like, who else would he be waiting for? Oh, Regina! Oh! Don't hold your tongue, Ben. It's your job to answer all the stupid questions. I'm, I'm sorry, Trillo. Gotta find a way to get more information out of this witness. Fuck! Right. Yeah, I know, I know. I know, bro. Hmm, Trello wouldn't happen over the chair, but yeah, well, Max is part of it, which is probably Max home. Okay, yeah, 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 okay. Well, if he was waiting outside in the cold, it was for one person. Ugh. And one person only. He was waiting for the animal tamer, Regina. Whoa! He just killed himself! <laughs> okay. You were waiting outside for Regina to come back to the lodging house. Am I mistaken? He said no. Is this true? Well, I... um... You can't really ask me that question. Who cares who I was waiting for that night? What's important is what I saw. Don't you forget it. Well, well, well. The puppet may be a bit stiff, but he's right. Uh, whatever. Okay, all right. There's obviously a reason why this witness was there that night. He spent all that time waiting for Regina to arrive. Moreover, even if someone else would have walked right in front of him, I doubt he would have paid them a second thought. Ugh! That, make, that makes perfect sense. What did you just say? The witness saw the defendant at the scene of the crime. No, we didn't. However, he did not see the victim on the way to his eventual demise. If you accept that, then you must accept that there is a high likelihood that... He could have missed someone else other than... Ma Ow! There is absolutely no proof that the witness was waiting for the animal tamer. Um, um, oh, I guess you got me. All right, all right. I'll spill the beans for the real, I'll spill the beans for real this time. It's true. I was waiting for Regina. Pain. <laughs> Don't volunteer things. Mr. Quist. <laughs> Tell us the truth this time, and I mean the whole truth. Were you, or were you not, waiting for Regina at the entrance to the lodging house? 
I was. I was waiting to propose to her. You were what? Waiting to propose? Rude. What's the matter? You'd think that humans have a monopoly on marriage. That, that matter of puppet marriage is not under review in this case. You're the judge. I mean, look at your horrible outfit. More pain. <laughs> Thanks to your bumbling, my perfect plan is not so perfect anymore. Now we have to waste time getting to the bottom of some silly proposal by a puppet. Puppet marriage? Don't be surprised that I was going to propose to Regina. I even had something to give to her. I kept it in my pocket waiting for the chance to propose and give it to her. Of course, I had it all in my pocket. I, I also had it in my pocket that night. It was a present for her. In the end, I wasn't able to give it to her, so I still got it in my pocket. <laughs> you were going to propose. You. A puppet. You stiff wooden ass. Don't be so obtuse. Just because I'm a puppet doesn't mean I can't love. I guess you're right. Just because I've been old- just because I'm old doesn't mean I couldn't propose to her too. I'm over it. I'm not gonna- I'm not gonna speak on that anymore. Capcom is just- Exactly. His honor is looking a little less than honorable right now. <laughs> Got him. Okay, Mr. Wright. Please continue with your cross-examination. <sighs> what was with that sigh at the end? He's not married. That's what, <laughs> that's what. <clears throat> I was so surprised that I was going to propose to Regina. You're a puppet, bro. By proposal, you mean proposing marriage, correct? To Regina. Of course, that's what I meant. What kind of stupid question is that? I was I wasn't going to propose that we become some sort of outlaw biker gang together, right, Ben? Y yeah. Got it? That's the truth. I even had something to give to you. What was it exactly that you planned on giving her? You know exactly what I was going to give her, numbskull. Oh, no way. No way. From Trillo to Regina. That's what this is. Okay. It took me one and a half Ace Attorney games to get hip with, like piecing things together, without being told to piece them together. The only thing I could find that it could match Regina's beauty. Answer his question, what was it? You're gonna die when you hear this. It's an engagement ring. <laughs> engagement ring? Engagement ring? Wow, those two nearly fell out of their chairs. You got- they're standing. Mr. Phoenix Wright's joke has gone too far. Time for this to end, right here. Francisca's whip looks like it's about to lash out at almost anything. One hit from that thing will probably shut someone up for a long time. Pain equals bad. Push on, anyway. Come on, we're tough. Maybe something of a joke, but this is a historic moment. This is the first time that a- I advise you to cut this argument short. I'm going to have to agree with the defense here. Will the witness please revise their testimony specifically about the engagement ring? I'd like to stick to the facts, not sociology. You sure do enjoy sweating the details, especially for a man in a black bath robe. I plan on giving an engagement ring to Regina. An engagement ring? Uh huh. It's actually a diamond-shaped stone cut from glass. Even more brilliant than the real thing. I think Regina is going to love it. It's just a ring. What's the matter, Nick? Well, there's gotta be something I can catch him on. He says he still has it. Whoa, gonna go on a whim here. Gonna go on a whim here, hold on. You mean this, bro? 
Trillo, do you mind if I show you something? What is it? What are you talking about? Uh-oh. Looks like they're going to double-team me now. Uh, uh, get him. Do you recognize this ring? Oh, that's... That's... That's mine. Hey, give it back. Thief. Thief. Didn't you just testify about this very object? I believe you said, in the end, I wasn't able to give it to her, so I've still got it in my pocket. Why then do I have it right here? Ah! Oh. <laughs> These animations are hilarious. What is going on here? That's... That's... Ben, say something. It... Don't put me on the spot like that, Trillo. I found this in Money's room. M m money's room? You mean a room they put money? Like, like a bank vault? Ah, that filthy monkey's gonna get what's coming to him. That is... Okay. Mr. Quist, I would prefer if you avoided slandering innocent fiats in my court. Well, your honor, money really is a monkey. In every sense of the word. Oh, I see. Uh, well then. Money likes to go after the shiniest things that he can find and gather them up. Shiny... things? Trillo. When was this ring stolen from you? Well, I suppose it was... that time... you know... that night... the night of the crime. What did you just say? Details. I need more details. Well, it, it was stolen right after Max showed up in the plaza. Oh! Right about when you saw the defendant walk past, correct? Well, um, I guess you might uh, be able to say that. The ring might have... well, it could have been taken around that time. Okay, okay, bro, I get it, dude. Ben, what's with you? Uh, whatever. Ben, what's with you? Uh, whatever. Has nothing to do with anything. Especially not who committed the murder. It's not for you to decide. It's not for you to decide what has to do with what. Uh, it's me. Now, Trillo, back to the topic at hand. <laughs> Excuse me. I haven't omitted a thing. Not I, Mr. Trilloquist. What did you do when the ring was taken, Trillo? You know exactly what I did. I chased after that ring-snatching monkey money. But you weren't able to catch up to him, were you? That's why I haven't. It's all this slow, loafy fool called Ben's fault. While he was fumbling his way through the snow, that dumb monkey was able to get away. Eh. That is indeed an incredible shame. Well, this does indeed prove one very important point. Prove an important point? What could that possibly be? Ben's testimony has a flaw, duh. Alright. That other thing is stupid. There is a huge contradiction in this witness's testimony. Contradiction? The, wi the witness just testified to the following effect. Up until the police arrived, he didn't move from the plaza entrance to the entrance. Oh yeah, he chased after him. Okay, okay. However, the witness just stated that he chased after Money the monkey. When the witness was off chasing Money, there was no one watching the plaza. What is the meaning of all this, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Where are you going with this little theory of yours? I'm saying that there is no possible way that... way that this witness saw the plaza the entire time. That's where I'm going with this little theory. Which leads me to my next point. It is entirely possible that someone other than the defendant was at the scene. Mo? Like... We're gonna forget about Mo? Well then, tell me this, Mr. Phoenix Wright. 
Do you have any proof that something slipped past this village vigilant ventriloquist? Vigilant ventriloquist. Well, he obviously didn't see the victim, the ringmaster, arrive on the scene. However, that doesn't change the fact that he saw the defendant arrive. The witness is lying, he's blinded by his rivalry with Max. That reminded me of, um... What was it? It was the Fairly Odd Parents episode? It was the- no, it wasn't an episode, it was the TV movie. Where he goes into the TV with the remote thing. And then they do the anime... Spoof. And they're all talking like this, and their mouths don't really match what they're saying, and you know, stuff like that. It's just funny. Right, I have to be- I have to be a little quiet now. Well, the defense's argument does hold water. This witness does have a history of animosity towards the defendant. What? How dare you? I wouldn't lie just to get the dog face in trouble. He's not even worth it. I saw him, no doubt about it. I saw that worthless liar. Well, just for clarity's sake, let's flesh out exactly who you saw on that night. Ha! I've told you so many times, you think you know my story's not changing. You've already changed your story, stick boy. And I'm not sure it will change some more. Well, there is one lie. There are usually many more behind it. Where there was... Okay. Exactly, Maya. That's why we have to keep after him. Yeah. Sick. Witnessing Max. I'll give you the... I'll, I'll give you the... I was waiting that night for Regina. But that doesn't change the fact that I saw Max in the plaza that night. Plaza. Plaza. He showed up after I had been waiting there for about five minutes. That's false, bro. Uh, whatever. I said good evening to him. He didn't even acknowledge my presence. That's not Max. I don't think that's Max. I'm absolutely sure it was him. I saw Maximilian Galactica at the scene. There's no way I could mistake someone wearing those three ridiculous symbols. Who could it have been? Who could it have been? Could have been Mo. Or it could be someone we haven't even met yet. Sometimes that's happened before. Hmm. So that means that money didn't show up until after you saw Max. That's right. Money ran up less than a minute after I saw Max. Then money snatched the ring. And you went chasing after him? How long was it until you came back to where you were waiting? Well, let's see. I'd say about... I suppose five minutes, I think. So the victim could have arrived on the scene in that five minute stretch. Mr. Wright, please proceed with your cross-examination. This is like a max of three cross-examinations in a trial. Maybe? I'll give you what I was waiting for that no Wait, I'll give you that I was waiting for that note in Regina. Oh, that's right. Press. Okay. He already cross-examined law. So you were only concerned with waiting for Regina that night. That means you probably would have noticed if someone else showed up. You should think about that. I mean, well, you should think about how many eyes I actually have. I've got four, you know. Four. F-O-U-R. Captain Ben, of course. With that many eyes, do you really think something would have slipped by me? Four eyes is an awful lot of attention directed at one area, I suppose. Yikes. Judge is even more dangerous to our case than Trillo. That doesn't change the fact that I saw Max in the plaza. So you saw Max coming out of the big top that night? Of course that's where I saw him coming from. Or staring at the entrance to the tent the entire time. I guess that makes sense. Especially since he was waiting for Regina. Okay. He showed up. About what time would you say these events took place? You're one of the dumbest people on the planet if you can't figure it out for yourself. You already know that practice finished promptly at 10 p.m. And you already know that I went to the lodging house right after practice. Don't need to be a brain surgeon to know around what time it was when I saw him. 
Just add 10 more minutes. I'm sure you can do that. Now, what time was it? Indeed. What time was it? Hmm. What time was it? Uh, let me think. Ah! I'm not... <sighs> it was 10.10. 10. Oh, yes. That sounds about right. It sounds about right because that's the time I saw Max on the scene. I said good evening to him, but he didn't acknowledge my presence. So you testified that you said good evening to Max that night. You must enjoy asking incredibly obvious questions. You say good morning in the morning and you say good afternoon during the day, right? And it's obvious that I said good night to someone at night. What, Ben? You've got something to add. Let me guess. That's not it, Trillo. You said good evening at night. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Trillo. Mr. Quist, I would prefer if you kept your ventriloquist's act outside of the courtroom. Impossible. A performer lives and breathes in his performances. You should know better. There's got to be something wrong with this bit of testimony. Trillo's evening greeting Ben's half of the comedy act. <laughs> Um, pressing is always something. Nothing especially Ben's half of the comedy act. Trill is evening greeting. Isn't that a bit strange to you? What do you mean? Well, if you hate Max so much, why would you bother being nice to him? It strikes me as somewhat strange. What would it strike you as strange? Exactly. How is it strange to be cordial? 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 to one of your co-workers. Well, if it was simply just being cordial to a co-worker, I would understand. Ow! That hurt. Maybe you should think of having some proof before your lips start flapping next time. Proof is everything in this world. You should have learned that back in grade school. There's no reason that Trillo would ever say something nice to Max. But how do I go about providing that with evidence? Oh, yeah. Okay. Bluffing is everything in this world, but I'm sure you already learned that one. I guess I can give it a shot. The witness will resume his testimony. I'm absolutely sure it was Zom. I saw Max. Great. Again, going out on a whim, but I think it's right. Yep, let's get it! Trillo, is it not true that you had a fight with Max on the day of the murder? A fight? A fight over Regina, to be exact. It wasn't that big a deal. It was just an argument. A disagreement at most. A disagreement usually doesn't end with someone getting clonked over the head. Whoa. You smashed your shit. That morning, Ben got clobbered over the head by Max, didn't he? Wh what? Is that just an admission of assault and battery? Ouch! Before we handle that, we should wrap up the defendant's murder charge first. The truth is that on the day of the crime, the defendant and witness had a huge fight. There is absolutely no way they could have suddenly became cordial that event that evening. Moreover, just consider the personality of the witness on the stand. There is no way a puppet this lewd would just stop and say good evening to his rival. Objection! Big right. Are you saying this witness is lying? <laughs> that he is trying to frame the defendant by claiming to have seen him at the crime scene? I, 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 I didn't tell a single lie. Honestly, I, I just... That's enough from you, Mr. Quist. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Let's just clarify this testimony for the court. Could you explain your theory about- Hold on, hold on. Okay. Could you explain your theory about who the witness actually saw that night? He didn't see anyone, he saw the defendant, he saw a different person. He saw a different person. It could have been someone dressed as Max, but he did see somebody. So if he wasn't lying, he did see Max, but it wasn't Max. It was somebody dressed up as Max, so he saw a different person. 
It is my belief that the witness didn't see someone that night. Did see someone that night, huh? It was just someone else. That's who he said good evening to. That's who he said good evening to. What kind of theory is that? The correct one. Furthermore, I don't believe the person the witness saw was Max at all. Wh what? If he had truly met Max that night, there would have been no greeting at all. Which means there is only one proper answer. The person the witness saw that night was not Maximilian Galactica. That is why Trillo made the effort to greet whoever it was that he saw that evening. Or good evening, as he put it. Uh... What in the world? You... Will the defendants kindly explain who it was Trillo saw that evening? Um... I think it was Mo. Because he said he saw it. I was wrong. This is the person that the witness felt the need to greet that night. Hmm, how about it, Mr. Quiz? I bet you stop asking me this. Uh, you can show me. Uh, Alright. What are you actually doing, Woodman? You better not say, Trillo, watch your mouth. Uh, well, okay. Sorry about that, Trillo. Order! Order! There will be an order in my courtroom. Yeah, okay, okay. Fine, bro. Fine, bro. Let me actually continue. Oh, now I've done it. Okay, okay, you better rethink this lot of questions before I lose my patience. Okay, uh... I can't save again. <laughs> the monkey? Um... Considering the ill temper of the witness, there is only one person he would greet. Duh. God, I'm stupid. I'm not saying that. No, your honor, you fucking perv. It's not Regina. If it was Regina, Trillo would have given her the engagement ring as a present. Oh, yeah. Uh, I suppose you've got a point there. It was Russell Berry, the victim himself, was it not? Indeed. You are correct. It was indeed Russell Berry. The person you saw that evening was the victim, the ringmaster Russell Berry. That's why you greeted him, Trillo. Isn't that correct? I can't gulp. In an accent. Answer the question, Mr. Quist. Uh, uh... How do you respond to this? W w wait a second. Well, at, at first I thought it was the old man. But, 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 but once I got a better look at him, it was obviously Maximilian Galactica. Oh my gosh, bro. I think it is high time that we clear the air about this question. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. I'm just saving just in case, bro. Mr. Quist obviously witnessed a single person in the area of that plaza that evening. The problem is identifying who exactly that person was. Was it Maximilian Galactica? Or was it the ringmaster, one Mr. Russell Berry? The prosecution argues that it was the defendant that the witness saw that night. The witness has clearly stated that he saw the defendant's three symbols. Three symbols? All right. This is getting old. Come on, man. You've got to remember them now. Well, now, here we go again. Everybody, all together now. I. Yes, yes, we all know. The silk hat, cloak, and white roses. False. Bro. A silk hat and a cloak. Anyone could wear them. They'd even look good on me. Ugh. What was that? Well, the witness has endlessly repeated that he saw Max's three symbols. However, how do you really know it was Maximilian Galactica? It could have been someone else dressed up as him. Possibly even Russell Berry. Uh, what? Miss Von Karma. Do you have clear evidence that the person the witness saw was the defendant? 
Well, I... If that's the case, then it is impossible for me to make a judgment at this point. Yes, I think we finally win a point. Won a point this one. That is very unfortunate. Huh? You're just a little too excited for your own good, Mr. Wright. What do you mean by that? You merely established one thing from this witness. You established that this witness saw one person in the plaza that night. I applaud you on your effort, but... But? Who that person was can only be answered by the next witness. What do you mean, next witness? Huh? Your Honor, the prosecution will provide, beyond a shadow of a doubt, an answer to that question, and evidence that clearly establishes one thing. That there is no one other than Maximilian Galactica responsible for this crime. And it's, uh, Mo. Very well. The court will take a ten minute recess. During that time, I request the prosecution prepare their next witness. Court is now in recess. Oh, thank God. I totally forgot that there was like a trial former letter thing. Whew. This recording is long, but I, I stopped it for long periods. All right. So Mo is about to come in next. He openly told me that he actually did witness the crime. So what he says is going to be very important. This whole first trial is just a bunch of BS about Trillo lying. Me saying he was lying. But did state that there was one person that he saw. Now who that person was, we are going to hopefully find out in the next trial. Or the, like trial part two. I have no idea who it could have been. <laughs> it was Russell Berry. Who was it? You know, it's always someone that we haven't been introduced to yet. I, I have found that out. Going strong with Ace Attorney. This is episode... Three, yeah? Yeah, it's right there. I finished Control. I am no longer playing Control, so that's gonna be filled with something. Uh, yeah, along with this, you see what else I'm playing. Um, if you want to see any of that stuff, please consider subscribing here on YouTube or following me over at Twitch with the link in the description. Uh, if you like the video, please consider leaving a thumbs up, comment on what you think of the Ace Attorney series, and share it to your social medias. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a good day.